Hey everybody, so um, I wanted to give you a demonstration on using the block printing things and I want just to prove that you could do it at home you can see I'm doing it in my kitchen. Um, actually I moved the block print over there so I'm going to let you look at this fantastic tool for just a minute while I go pick up the block print. Okay, also I'm going to turn on the studio lights. There we are, so we can see a little bit better what's going on, all right? So, um, those of you who have the, who, who picked up a block from school, right, you can, should hopefully remember from the um, transfer lesson that I transferred my image onto my block. Now, I've already started carving this so you can see it part way. Um, but I transferred the image onto my block using exactly that method that I put in the slideshow the other day. And I used this, um, what is that, the, this micron marker to trace over everything because if you've started doing this already, I'm sure you found that your hand will smudge the graphite. Um, especially soft pencil. You know how it is. Soft pencil smudges very easily. It doesn't stick as well to the linoleum. So I retraced it just so I could see what was going on. All right. Unfortunately, I could not find these. I have these. I know we have some in the studio, but no luck finding them. So you're going to have to be careful. But this, when we do find them, I'll send one your way. This is called a bench hook. And the way it works is that it holds onto the table like that so that when you're cutting, you have something to press against, all right? Now, it's one of the things that I'm actually a little nervous, as always happens, you got to be very careful when you're cutting these things. Somebody always, um, I don't want to say somebody always cuts themselves, but often we have cutting ourselves problems. So if you went and picked up the block, block printing materials, you would got a handle and some knives in there. All right, not everybody got the same set just because I'll explain later. Um, and this is my personal set, but it's the same as what some of you got. There's different shapes. There's like a wide shape and a deep shape and a thin shape and a knife edge. I've never really figured out how to use that one. Um, right, and so the way that it works, all right, I like to always do it this way. Take out the one tool, the one blade that I need, and put the rest back in the back of the handle and that way I'm never like walking around looking for things right there we go it should screw on now you've got kind of a wide edge I know it's hard to see using photo booth here but you got a wide edge so that helps that that uses to hold the blade in place you unscrew not all the way but you unscrew the I don't know whatever that's called the top of the handle and you slip your blade in there all right so that the blade part the sharp ports put now and then you twist it until it's good and tight you don't have to really 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 twist it but you want to twist it so it's good and tight all right now I'm not going to use the bench hook just because you don't have the bench hook to use either so I want you to want you to see how it's done without the bench hook check it out and there are a couple of things you got to keep in mind one never cut towards yourself never do this for lots of reasons the, the biggest reason being that's a terrible way to cut you don't have as much strength the other reason being you know what happens right if it slips off another thing and students don't always not even just students adults don't always do this either um never cut towards your hand so now don't just cut to, not cut towards your body don't cut towards your hand all right don't do this all right, when you're pushing and cutting, you don't want to do that. I, I can almost guarantee um, probably 98% of the time people cut like this. At some point in time, they cut themselves. All right, so the way to do it, right, if you don't have a bench hook, take whatever your, um, you know, like your supporting hand. For me, it's the left. Put it down. Take your dominant hand. For me, it's the right. And use your supporting hand to hold the block in place and your dominant hand to cut. All right. And if you always, and this is kind of nice too, when you're doing really fine details is that you can use your supporting hand to hold onto 
your as sort of like a I don't know sort of a rest for your dominant hand okay all right so now I've already done this um, so I'm not going to show you exactly but the first thing I do after I transfer my image is I trace around everything now block printing has it's kind of this funny situation. The most basic way you can do it is to you either on or you're off. Means the surface either raised or it's recessed. There's other there's other methods. We'll talk about those in another video. Um, so what you have to do is turn it takes a little practice turning your mind around in those somersaults to figure out okay what's going to be the raised part, what's going to be the recessed part. Um, I think the easiest way to get your brain thinking about it is to just trace around everything. I'm sure it's very difficult to see. Maybe if I hold it up super close, you can see the cuts that I made around this bird, right? I just trace everything out because then I'm for sure there's a line, all right? And then actually that helps me figure it out too. And then from there, what I do is I think about, okay, what do I want to be raised and what do I want recessed? And so it made sense for me to think, okay, so then I'm going to do off, on, off, on. Right? So that means, you know, like all this sky here, the big space here is recessed, but I'll make this space here um, raised, and I'll make this space here recessed and raised. So what you do is after you trace around everything, um, oh wait, we we'll just back up. So now I just want to show you how to cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of those spaces in between the rocks, right? Because I want the rock raised here, but I want to have a little bit of like a texture to it. So, take my, take my blade, supporting hand, dominant hand, all right, and I'm going to press down and then guide the blade through. Now, it's a funny balance of pressure, but not too much pressure. You do have to push, right, and you've got to give it a little bit of effort, but you don't want to give it too, too much, right, um, especially when you find that it sticks a little bit or it's a little bit hard. I think this is a good bit of advice. Always imagine what would happen if all the, you know, the knife let go all of a sudden, all right, which sometimes happens. So if, that, if I was pushing very, very hard and I thought, oh, if the knife lets go, it's going to make this big, giant, diagonal long line across the block, and I don't want that, They'll be, it'll, that'll be hard to fix. So if you feel like you're pressing really hard and it's not going, back off a little bit and then and then go back into it. So I'm just going in here. I'm pressing a little bit. You can make nice. This makes nice curved lines. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you once you get the hang of it, you you can you actually really get a lot of nice control out of it. And then I'm just going to clean out because this is a small space. I'm just going to clean out those areas that I want to be recessed. Right, and then I'm gonna put a line here. You notice moving away, moving away from my hand. All right, and then I'm kind of cleaning up the little scraps. It's perfectly acceptable to turn your block around in different shape, in different directions. Don't think you always have to be going towards the top. There we go. See, make a nice little line there. Oops, there we are. And then what I'll do is just sort of slowly clean out the space. Now I did that with the small one because this is a small space. All right, so make sure, here, here's something that you're going to find happens is that by doing this, you're creating a lot of small slivers of this linoleum, all right? So, um, here's my advice. Do this somewhere you can sweep the floor. Um, if you get it onto the carpet or onto the rug, it's a little bit more difficult to clean up, and sadly these things get everywhere. But they're not like styrofoam where they stick to everything. They sweep up very, very nicely. Um, so do this somewhere where it's very easy to dust off the table, very easy to sweep up the floor, um, so it just makes it easier to, to clean. I would really prefer not to get um, 
frustrated emails from your parents about how I asked you to do something that made a big giant mess and they're cleaning the stuff out of the carpet for the last, you know, six months. All right, so I'm going to change, just to show you, um, I'm going to change to a wider blade here because what I do is after I've traced out everything, then I go in with a wider blade and I clean out larger areas. Now, I personally have found over the years that I use, I pretty much only use two blades. I use the little one and I use this big one. Um, I know it's hard to see against the kitchen, but right. Um, the other ones I don't use all that much. I've just developed a familiarity with it. And I think that um, you too will develop a familiarity. There'll be, they'll come times where you learn to use their specific tools that you like more um, than others. Or maybe you find you like them all. So what I'm going to do, this is a challenge, and this is why I saved this part for you all, all right, is that because I want this part to be raised and I want this part to be raised, I have to do something that sets the two apart and tells the viewer that they're two different spaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up against the side of the rock, right, that's a rock, and I'm going to just carve away a little bit to create just a little bit of white space when the block is printed um, against this background. And that will tell the viewer that, hey, these are two different spaces. All right. Um, one more thing before I start is that um, another thing to think about is that you can see where I've cut some of this away already. That'll still print a little bit. So what you want to think about is how can you use these lines to your advantage? right? My composition generally has this diagonal um, emphasis. So to kind of contrast that and to create the emphasis on the diagonal, I'm going to make these cuts horizontally. And then that way, this diagonal motion is, is the dominant thing and it's not being competed with by the way the cuts are made. So here we go. Um, again, I'm just going to do nice, slow, small little cuts. I'm going to allow the blade to kind of help me out a little bit in deciding how it should look. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of digging in, and then as I move away from the stone, then it's I'm bringing the blade up a little bit. All right, you can see there's lots of crumbs. I didn't bother. I didn't bother. Um, sweeping my floor today because there's going to be just more crumbs, crumbs on it. There we are. All right, so I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. You get the idea, um, right? And, and I'll go through all of that, and I'll, I'll clean all of it off um, and slowly work the image. All right, so one last thing that I'm going to say, and then I'm going to let you go, is that you should watch out and be careful that to plan that you have evenly dispersed raised spaces. If you have, like, so I have this kind of, like, funky little starfish character here, right? If you have just one raised space and one part of the whole block, then what will happen is a lot of the recessed spaces will print anyway. So what you've got to do is kind of plan it so that the paper has something to rest against in different places on the block so that when it prints, it prints what you want it to and not what you don't want it to. It still prints a little bit here, but what you don't want is like a solid area over here of these kind of like recessed cuts um, that are in competition with what you want people to look at. So to these ends, you can see I've left a little bit of a border on each side of these big open spaces. That way, that way when the block prints, you know, there'll be a piece of paper on the top. When the block prints, it'll have something here solid to print that'll help work as visual anchors as the things move around. All right? Okay, everybody, that's all that I have for you. That's 15 minutes. Wow, that's longer than I expected. 
Um, I hope it's been informative. Don't forget, if you want a block and you don't have one yet, I'm very happy to get one to you. Just let me know. I'll meet you. I can leave it at the gate. Um, or if you're in the Jiushenchao, Wangjiang, Lidu area, I'll, I'll even bring you one. Okay? Um, have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic weekend. Um, and I'll follow up next time with actually printing the block. It'll be good fun.